there was this one set of clubs I got, uh, and because the customer said the shafts were playing too stiff. There was something fishy about these clubs that I couldn't pinpoint until I decided to take one of the clubs apart. After you remove a graphite shaft, it's customary to immediately remove any epoxy core while it's still warm. So I took my 6 inch long, 8 inch diameter drill bit and drilled as far as I could into the tip of the shaft. And yet there was still an epoxy core inside. Well, luckily I had an extra long drill bit um, that would fit in this occasion. Well, the long story short, the epoxy went up two and a half feet inside the shaft. I checked another club and it was exactly the same way. Well, yeah, the, the shaft will tend to be stiff if there's a solid plug um, inside resisting the bending of the shaft. So I called up the customer and told him what I found. I'd ask him how he got so much epoxy in there. Well, he said he would fill up the hosel and insert the shaft. When no epoxy was left, he would add some more. Kept on doing that. Okay, I had to ask him why. Well, he said he was trying to swing weight the clubs using the epoxy. I tried explaining why this was a no-no and, and why. He replied, well, no one told me I wasn't supposed to. So you've all been forewarned, although any of the club making books would not show this technique. So why would you think it's an acceptable method? Okay, I'll get off my soapbox here. Where were we? Oh, okay. Next is the shafting method. And it's somewhat similar to the mixing stick method. But instead of using the mixing stick, we'll simply dip and roll the shaft into the epoxy. No other epoxy is added inside the hosel because if you do this right, you'll still have more than an adequate amount to bond the club onto the shaft. This is my preferred method because it takes less time in cleaning up. All you do is insert the shaft um, into the hosel and slowly rotate in an up and down motion. This will ensure that the epoxy will thoroughly coat the entire bonding surface for a superior bond. One thing we haven't mentioned, because we have a webinar later this year, is about swing weighting. But if you're using the tip pins for swing weighting, you want to do that now. Uh, epoxy will need to go on the pin to prevent uh, the possibility that it will become loose and rattle. And your ferrule should be in place by now. But if you only have it on partially on the shaft, uh, because you're using the tip pins for swing weighting, then you want to uh, seat the shaft in the hosel at this point. You want to make sure that there's at least three quarters, uh, three quarters of an inch on the shaft tip in the hosel. So you grab in one hand uh, the head, and in the other, place it on the shaft approximately 12 inches down from the top of the hosel. Then if you hold the shaft tightly onto the head, you can drive the butt of the, the shaft uh, against the floor and then you continue this until you can feel the shaft bottom out in the hosel. We kind of explained that in the, uh, the, the last webinar as well. When installing the shaft, you want to note the position of the silk screen. Uh, this is usually very prominent on the graphite shafts or it's located at the bottom on the steel shafts. Uh, you want to install the shaft uh, with, with the silk screen aligned in the proper manner. Cosmetically, it's often recommended that the silk screen, you know, the writing on the shaft, whether it's say Alvalor or Graphloy or uh, whoever it might be, uh, you want that in the 12 o'clock position if we were looking at a clock so it's visible. While others prefer it the 6 o'clock position so it's not. That's entirely up to you. But spend some extra time before you leave the epoxy to cure. You want to take a look at the shaft and the head checking for any excess epoxy. Wipe away any excess epoxy with a uh, paper towel with solvent at this point. You want to double check that there's no space uh, between the ferrule and, uh, and the hosel, um, if one is even required, or clean it off real good on, uh, on the putters. Finally, you want to recheck the silk screen to, to see if it's in the correct position, and you want to set the club aside with the head on the floor to dry or if the cl uh, club placed horizontally on a drying rack. Make sure it's in a place that's undisturbed. No kids, no dogs, nothing like that. These few cleanup tips will uh, save you uh, a bunch of work uh, and a much more difficult task later on. Now remember, once the epoxy is dried, 
it's on there for good. No solvent will remove it after it cures. This is one of the key points to build clubs professionally, is the neatness. Okay, here's kind of a recap of the do's and don'ts. Wait for the uh, slide to turn for you guys. Okay, you want to only use an appropriate epoxy. Again, not a glue for the job. A 24-hour epoxy is always recommended as the shear strength is higher and less likely to, to fail. Shafts should be properly abraded. You can view the shaft abrasion webinar for some helpful tips there. You want to clean all parts uh, from oil or epoxy residue in the case of reshafting or repair. Acetone works well for this, but allow it to evaporate before applying epoxy, otherwise you'll contaminate the epoxy. Make sure to completely mix the epoxy and is not, it's, it's not possible to overmix unless it's very fast setting. And use uh, epoxy sparingly. Don't think that if it's a little is good, a lot is better attitude, otherwise that can lead to potential breakage. Shafting beads may be needed to act as a filler when the, the shaft is slightly loose inside the hosel, but don't ever attempt to use epoxy to take up large differences in space, such as trying to install a 335 shaft into a 350 hosel or a 355 taper tip shaft into a 370 bore, as the epoxy will not hold. Uh, simply put, epoxy was de not, not designed to take care or act as a filler. You want to carefully mix the epoxy in the proper proportions. And you want to clean up any leftover epoxy from the club, as well as your workbench and even your mixing stick. What you don't want to do is rush your work, um, even if you've done this a thousand times before. And don't uh, let epoxy cure in cold temperatures unless you factor that into uh, when they could be safely hit. And uh, lastly, don't move assembled parts before they begin to set up. Now that's a wrap. Let's turn this back over to Rob. All right, Jeff, that was great. Very informative, very thorough, too. You really are the epoxy king. Okay, everyone, questions can start coming in now. First one comes from John. He needs info for building a heat box, how to build one, and how does it work with the epoxy that you sell? Okay, um, I didn't put any drawings or anything up, but you can build a box out of uh, wood with uh, a hinge and a handle. That's, let me just think for a second how big it would be. You're probably looking at uh, two and a half feet, maybe two feet deep, two feet wide, something in that, that order. And then you can... Um, just get a, um, a light bulb fixture, like what you'd find in your basement, those little uh, 